Although I'm a thousand miles south of the Arctic Circle, this cave stays cold all year round. The rock and soil beneath the surface are permanently frozen all through the summer. I'm here with geologist Jeremy Shacken and mountain guide Dave Stark. Getting a little tight, huh? I'm crawling already. The ground inside this cave has been frozen since the last ice age. This is 10,000 years of permafrost. You can feel it getting cold fast. Yeah. To preserve this unique cave, it's closed to the public. Even scientists restrict their visits to once every few years. Now, this is really cool back in here now. It's opening up. Whoa, look at this chamber. Now we're in an auditorium with a ginormous rockfall. Wow. 15 minutes in, and there's a spectacular change. Oh, my god, look at this. You crawl in, hands and knees. OK. And, uh, watch your heads all going first. Cold knees. It's like a gigantic igloo. <laughs> How deep is the ice you're crawling on? I don't know, but you can see way down. Oh, my god. That's standing oh, holy yeah. moly. <laughs> you got to see these. No. Super weird. It's oh. like. <laughs> That's crazy, though. I mean, this is like, uh, it's like being inside rock candy. This is unbelievable. This is one of the most amazing places I've ever been on this planet. The ground's so cold here, any moisture in the air freezes to the cave walls, forming enormous crystals of ice. They're, but they're big. They're like five inches across. your hand, right? I've never seen ice crystals like this. No. And there's some that are like big dinner plates. I feel like I'm in a crystal chandelier factory. Stuff looks like glass, not ice. Holy cow. This place is so totally amazing. I can hardly believe it. And actually, it's pretty crazy. Some of these are dripping just a little bit. It's very clear that just our bodies in here, if we stay much longer, are going to change the temperature of this place. And we're looking at kind of a remnant of an ice world. It's, yep. it's amazing. This is uh, an ice world that's changed into a non-ice world. Let's, uh, let's duck and go. <coughs> Stay low. This crystal cavern is a reminder that we are still living in an ice house world. But it looks fragile, on the cusp of change. This is treacherous going in here, man. Slick rock. Slick, jagged, loose rock. If we go deeper into the cave system, we can see what happened when it warmed in the past. So the farther back in the cave, the further back we go in time. Yep. Wow. Oh, wow. That is totally peeling away from the ceiling. Oh, like right over your head. Right like this ice at our feet. Seems like it came from up there. Wow, that is crazy. In here, we find the flip side of the ice chandeliers, evidence from a warmer interglacial world the last time this crystal cave melted. See, that's the kind of stuff that would be so cool to date. This is the stuff that gives us a glimpse into a past warmer world when this whole cave was thawed out and there wasn't any ice. It's not forming now because it's cold in here and we don't have running water. But if we were in some warm time in the past when this cave was thawed, so the water comes down from the surface above, dissolves some of that rock, you'd have sheets of water running down this and it has little minerals dissolved in it. And when they run down the surface, they deposit those crystals. And layer by layer, they build this thing up. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, it's awesome. So let me show you this. If you check this out here, here's a flowstone that's actually from this cave. It looks like toffee. Yeah, absolutely, right? There's layers of caramel colored stuff in it, right? Absolutely. And so the way this one worked is oldest right here. Yeah. And then with time, it kept adding more and more and more layers to it. I get it. So it would have been something, you know, growing like that out of the wall. And you. just layer upon layer gets added. And what are you measuring? So basically, we're measuring when there's water flowing, right? Okay. Tells us when this thing is growing. Like this one, for instance, yeah. from this cave, 
we dated it, it's 400,000 years old. 400,000. 400,000. How much warmer was it 400,000 years ago? How much heating did it take to thaw out this permafrost? What's the danger line? And interestingly, 400,000 years ago, the world was warmer, but just like a couple degrees. It's sort of like the where we expect to be middle, later part of the century. If history repeats itself, the permafrost in this cave could be on the brink of melting again. What's wild about it is it contains a ton of frozen carbon. Um, and it's, it's a ton. It's twice as much carbon as already in the atmosphere. But where is that carbon coming from? It's just old, dead stuff. It's just old plants, animals that at one point were alive. They have carbon in them. They die, it goes down into that soil. So, so right now it's frozen, it's turned off, it's not going anywhere until you dial up the temperature a little bit. Open the freezer door, starts to melt. And all that meat will just start rotting, burping out methane and warming things up even more. How much global warming can you do before these caves, this Arctic permafrost, thaws out? Right, and it was dripping when we walked in here. Yeah, which I think means we're tipping back. Come back in 50 years or something, and these things are gonna be regrowing again. Okay, yikes. Yeah. Yeah, that's serious. Yeah. If the permafrost thaws in here, and across all the frozen land at the polar extremes, a massive release of methane and CO2 will speed up global warming all over the planet, creating an unprecedented threat to humanity.